Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Stitch House Creations. I'm Tammy, and I thought I would do a bonus few things about me. And I'm sitting here relaxing. The baby's sleeping, and my dog is resting on my lap and doing a little crochet, trying to get caught up on my temperature blanket. And, um, one of the things that I was sitting there thinking about is I listened to so many others, other things that come to mind. And um, when I was single for a, for a long time, near my, um, my mom had, uh, had kidney failure. And she didn't, she also had Crohn's disease for several years, and it was hard for her to distinguish the pain from Crohn's disease to the pain of actually having a kidney stone. I mean, it hurt that bad. So she didn't know the difference, and then one day her kidneys just shut down. We had to go to the emergency room, and she ended up being on dialysis for six and a half years. At the very end, she developed lung cancer just because for so long her immune system had been so suppressed with handling, you know, dialysis and the kidney failure. And she was not diabetic. Um, many people who are on dialysis are diabetic, but she was not. And um, she's just a little thing. And, um, and then, but I was blessed to be able to take care of her for six and a half years and, and until she passed away. And, um, and during that time I met my husband and got married and, and, you know, he was very supportive in that. And now my dad is ill. So him and I together, the team are helping to take care of my dad. He just got out of the hospital from... Um, the crud that's going around and he has trouble with this COPD and um, and um, knock on wood a couple other things uh, for me here is and I say knock on wood because it's it's just just that um, in my 52 years of life I've never had a cavity so when my daughter first had her teeth, had to first have her teeth, you know, drilled for a cavity. I couldn't even, I couldn't explain to her what it was like, and um, I've been blessed with not having to experience that yet, and um, hopefully I won't ever have to, Lord willing, and. Um, the other thing, which is a knock on wood thing, is I have never gotten a speeding ticket. I can tell you that is just, that is definitely by the grace of God, because there are plenty of times when I've speeded or I've ran a stoplight accidentally or I've gone through a stop sign. Haven't we all, right? Haven't we all? And, um, and that is just by the grace of God. So I'm actually hoping to hold those two records until... You know, I can't hold them anymore. <laughs> and, um, and, um, oh, see, the baby's waking up. I think it's because when I turn on the camera, he hears my voice. Well, I'm going to share more with you about things later, and I need to go take care of him. So I'll, I'll share some bonus stuff about you more in a little while. Okay, I'm back. Um, it's a little while later now, and um, I took care of the baby, and I'm getting ready to head to my dad's here in a few minutes because um, I'm going to go clean his house, and I have to stop and pick him up a microwave because his microwave broke. But I wanted to share with you just a few extra bonus things um, about me. So, um, one thing I did was, um, oh, when I was working, it's been, I left my job in 
July 2011, my husband um, said it's time to leave. So, and so I did that. I quit in 2011. I was working third shift. I had been on days for many years. And um, in 2008, I was at the tail end of like the layoff hit me. And then I went back to work. And I was one of the first ones back, but I was put on third shift. And I had been on third shift for uh, well over a year. And then he was like, I want you home, which is understandable. And um, so then I decided that, you know, I had asked him several times. I'm like, are you sure you want me to quit my job? So, and, um, he's like, yes. So, and then the doctor said it wasn't good for me and that I should not be doing it. And so there were other factors in there to weigh in on me leaving. So I worked in, um, at operating a CNC machine. I did that, um, work for 16 years during that, um, about a year and a half during that 16 year time frame, I tried my hand at becoming a machinist. And um, I was following, I had guys teaching me and there was one other girl who was a machinist. And I thought, well, I'm gonna give it a try. Good because, hey, what's the worst thing that could happen? And so I did and I did well for quite a while, and then I ended up having troubles with my arms. And I can tell you right now, from my experience in that, I, I was following the work of men, and, and I know some of you may disagree with me on this, but our bodies are not made the same. And when I was turning wrenches and um, you know, unscrewing things, then putting drills in and measuring, but basically the wrench turning, loosening the screws that the guys have tightened. I used to use what I call a cheater bar, and it was just a hollow bar, and I put it on the end of the wrench to give me more leverage, and then I'd use a hammer, and I'd um, unscrew the bolts or whatever I needed to, to get the work done. Um, doing that had caused wear and tear on my wrists and um, on my right arm, I ended up having to have surgery on the wrist and um, it aggravated a potential um, condition that was already there. but. Your ulna bone is supposed to be shorter than your radius, and my ulna bone was longer than my radius. So I had to have the width of three dimes taken off of it, and I have a steel plate and some screws in there. And then I got a ganglion cyst on my left wrist, and um, I had hip surgery to have that removed. From that point on, after I had those two surgeries, I requested that I just go back to, you know, reading blueprints and operating machine. Um, and I did. Yeah, I was thankful that they let me do that. That, um, and I did that job for 16 years and, um, and I enjoyed it. Enjoyed the people I worked with. Just, you know, love the people I worked with. And I miss them, and I st still see some of them randomly today. But um, ladies, we are not made like guys. And there are just some things that we can't do that men can do and that God designed them to be that way. And I, I only say that through my own experience. And... Um, it wasn't until I was trying to fill, do the type of job that they do that 
it affected me. But, um, so that was another thing. That was another thing about me. I also, um, was sitting there thinking about, um, one of my pet peeves is when my gas tank gets too low. Um, I don't like, I don't like it when my gas light, I don't like it to be, be under a quarter of a tank. I don't like to see my little gas light come on. I like to know I have enough gas in the vehicle to, or if I got lost somewhere, I can, I would be fine. Or, um, I was stuck somewhere. I had enough gas to keep the car running and warm. Whatever. I just don't like that. I don't know if any of you feel that way, but that's just one of the things. And I've always told my husband, because he lets the tank get down low, low, low. <laughs> and I'll be like, you need to get gas. He's like, well, we've got 25 miles to go. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> Please get gas. So he'll go get gas. And um, he knows that. He thinks it's funny. And... um I think it's like, okay, you're going to give me anxiety here. <laughs> and, but um, then there are a few other ones I, I've thought about. Yeah, I'm sure I'll think of some more to share with you. Uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks for joining in, and I hope you got a good laugh out of some of that. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.